Hey, welcome to Max 7 tutorial number 24, Multiple Mode Synth, which is really a heck of a title for something that's really just um, about tidying up mostly and learning to use like a gate object. Um, I am going to just... Uh, clean up a little bit here and get prepared to sort of move in the to to do the multiple mode of it so let's uh, this is where we left off in uh, tutorial 23 so let's um, take all this stuff but not pitch bender the broadcaster there and just move it down here because we just need a little bit of space because what we want to be able to do is switch between this keyboard controlling three different things. That's kind of where we're headed. So the first thing we need is a gate. So type N, type gate, and then type three, because it's going to have three outlets. And then we're going to make it automatically always open on the first one. So if you type another space and you type one, that means that whenever this thing turns on, it's going to be in the first gate will be open and it's nice to have one of them open um, so we can put this gate over here and we can put this and then we can hit option and move one here and so what we want is for uh, let's say the electronics are going to be this is the electronic down here the Johnny cycle is the electronic so let's make it the middle ones and then we'll connect these back up. Mind you that this goes in the right hand inlet of gate, as does this. So with gate, your data comes streaming in the right hand outlet, and it goes out whichever gate is open. And then the left hand outlet is the thing that you use to control which gate you're using. So we could use a variety of different things for that. Um, why not use something new? We'll type in N and type radio group. And we get this lovely little thingamajig. Um, but what we really want, I don't even know if you can see that it's kind of small. Um, what we want is three of them. So we're going to go down here to the... Um, number of items over here in the inspector and we're going to just change it to three and there we go now we have three so it, it's going to select one two or three and then if we want to whoops i'm going to select this reselect this again and um oh, i was hoping it had a something that would allow you to size it up a little bit, but uh, no, I don't. Oh well, not a big deal. So, so there's our radio buttons, and we can put um, comments next to them if we want to, at least for the time being. Um, and we could say um, MIDI, which we've already done. And uh, another comment. Whoops. You know, I I, I like to have a uh, yeah, I'm gonna prettier um prettier comments. Oh, I'll do it later. It's okay. So another comment that says, or I'll leave it up to you. Better let better yet, an electronic. And then the other one's going to be a mystery. So we'll write mystery comment. Mystery. Okay. So there they are. And uh, if we make these a little smaller, they'll fit more nicely. So we hit the format bucket, and we move these down to maybe 10. And, and then they'll... They'll fit better next to the next to the radio buttons. There 
There we go. And of course, whoops, there we go. By the way, you can use your arrows to move these things around if you like to get them just so. All right, so let's just put a number box under here and see what the heck the radio buttons do. And then we'll just drag this down near our gates so we can see what that does. Um, lock your patcher and then just go ahead and click through the button. So you got the first one, there's the second one, there's the third one. Now, so the first button is zero. And since there is no gate position zero, if you hover around, sorry, you have to unlock your patcher to do this, gate output one. So we need a one. So we're going to employ that famous trick of just adding one. So make this a plus one. And then you can run this to both of these gates which you can do using the shift key if you want to, or how, whoops, I did that thing again. Command, click, and you get rid of it. So now, um, if we lock our patcher, when we, when we change to electronic, we should be able to play. Whoops, uh, is volume up? Yes, yes, yes. But we don't have our other things in there. Now the MIDI, we could do a number of different ways to get that back there here. Of course, some of you might remember this, which I've just pulled off my other screen that has all the MIDI stuff. No, it doesn't. That's my other... Oh, for crying out loud. I mean this. They all look the same after a while, right? So I've been saving all my tutorial patchers. Hopefully you've been saving them too. Um, and this has the MIDI format stuff in it, which I could, if I were an evil genius, and I am, I can just grab all this stuff and put it over in my other patcher. So I can do that. Just do that. Command copy. Put this silly thing away. Come back over here. Zoom out quite a bit because this is going to be a mess. Oh, it's not unlocked. There we go. Put that there and paste that there. And look, we have our panic button, which I think maybe we'll just stick up here because when the MIDI goes bad, it goes real bad. And what do we need? The question, well, first off, we can get rid of most of this stuff. Uh, this is just everything. You need the MIDI out, definitely, but you don't need any of the other stuff around it. Um, so, let's see. We have our panic coming in here. We need some input from this gate and this gate, I see. Um, here... What we need is to look at this. So I'm going to move this over here before I... Uh, it's so, so hard sometimes. Um, we... I'll just zoom in and I'll show you. Okay, so this is the MIDI format and this is where the pitch and the velocity come in. So, and we also... Um, had this for tremolo, which we can reattach to the keyboard up top. And what else did we have? We had pitch bend and we had program change um, connected to the keyboard. So it's going to be hard for you to see this, but I need the space um, in the patcher to be able to do it. So here we go. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Zooming out. Whoops, zoom in too much. There, what? Too little? There we go. Okay. So this time now we're going to go from the gate, and this is the output of the pitch. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go in the left hand inlet of that pack object. This again, gate the left outlet, which is gate one. 
and I'm going to go in the right hand inlet of pack. So that's going to trigger our notes. Then what was the other one? This was um, tremolo. So we can, that's voice select. Sorry, this is tremolo. Yes. So this came out and went way over here. And then we had a pitch bend, and this pitch bend is still completely valid. You know, we could just put a receive pitch bend down here. That seems uh, in simple enough to do, right? So why don't we just do that? Type N, R, pitch, bend, J, in my case and connect that to the pitch bend. So we don't have to do that. And then the other thing that we still had was the voice select. And we'll just find our way down there to the voice select, which is also known as program change. And if you have any doubts, just um, noodle your mice around a little bit. So there it is, program change. That's the one we want. So we can make sure that that all works by locking our patcher, clicking on MIDI so all those gates change, and playing a little bit. It doesn't work at all, but I can actually see that it is working. Maybe it's just sending it to the wrong place. Or maybe I turned the volume... Oh probably doesn't have any volume yet. That's the other thing. You... <laughs> Maybe it doesn't uh, know what voice to use. What is it that's missing here? Ah, oh, there it is. It needed to know what voice to use, I guess. Yes, let's make a deal. Okay. Ah, tremolo's still on. And let's see if pitch bend works. It does. Okay, so we've got all of our MIDI stuff working. That's fantastic. Um, you know, we could just take it, take it and encapsulate it because we hardly need it. Uh, to look at it all the time. So shift command E and it all becomes a patcher and we're going to call it patcher MIDI synth J. <laughs> Just so that all of ours don't get mistaken for each other. Okay, so now here's one component for output. Um, I think now that that's that small, we can zoom back in here and uh, take a look. There we go. And, you know, we can also kind of crush all this down, too. Right here. Let me say Shift Command E and call that Patcher um, Electrosynth J. Very nice. And um, for, well, we, we'll get to uh, the mystery one later. Let's just see uh, how things are working now. So I'm going to go ahead and lock my patcher down and see. I, I, my guess is that things might not be working all of a sudden, because when you put things inside patchers, sometimes they go to zero. So you have to often adjust the volume knob and things like that. So amazingly, the MIDI is still working. Let's try a, a string ensemble. And let's go ahead and try the electronic. We have got some stuff going on here. Let's try the electronic and the pitch bend. 
man, it's all working. All right, so we're, we're getting this organized, and in the not-too-distant future, we are going to start on the mystery third part of our multimodal synthesizer called sampling. I'm going to leave that for next week. Have a great week, and I will patch with you all soon. Take care.